Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next story. Our next story, our last story, is the story of the ghost blimp. I actually just found out about the ghost blimp a couple days ago. Really bizarre story. And when you first, it's a, it's a sensational title. So you're like, oh, you know, they probably saw like a cloud in the sky and the Navy was like, oh, what's that? And then it disappeared and they're like, let's put that in the history books forever for people to ponder. This is a legitimate mystery. To this day, they still don't know what happened. So now we're in 1942. It's World War II. We're in San Francisco. People are like, ah, uh, Japanese may bomb us at any point. They did attack the coast a couple times. They attacked down in L.A. during Before the Battle of L.A., the uh, submarines were launching shells. Japanese submarines were launching shells at an oil refinery. We had a submarine appear off the coast up here in Portland. So there was that threat. So it's August 16th, 1942. And you got these two young men... They're blimp pilots. You know what? Okay, you know what? It's funny because you think about this. It's 1942. All the all the dudes are wearing their little uniforms. And all the like hot chicks and those like dresses that made them look like super thin. That kind of flared out. You got that. I guess that's more like disco music. But you know what I mean? You got that in the mood song. That's okay. Whatever. You have. It's not ragtime, but it's like that. It's like crappier jazz music playing all the time. Big band, whatever. So you have like these hot chicks. You have these young men in their uniforms. And they're at a bar. And the girls are like, ooh, look at them. Look at them hot servicemen. And the servicemen are like, yeah, we're in the Air Force. And the girls are like, ooh, do you fly? And they're like, yeah, we fly. Me and my buddy here, we fly. They're like, ooh, can we go on a flight with you? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> The blimp, the blimp going 10 miles an hour over the city. The two women completely bored. How? I get it. I get it. I think most people join the military for one of two reasons. To serve their country or to pick up chicks. And those are both noble reasons. But you join the Air Force, you want to fly a Mustang. You... Blowing stuff up. Not a blimp. Not a blimp. Not the slowest air vehicle ever made. The only thing slower than a blimp is a kite. And to be fair, kites can make better turns. You're in a blimp. Like, yes, you're in the Air Force. you got a snazzy uniform. <laughs> this new model. We can travel at the speed of wind. Oh my god, that's amazing. I w- will it hold up? Yeah, it'll hold up, gentlemen. Just be careful. Wear your seatbelt. So anyways... I'd like to say flying a blimp is better than nothing, but I don't know if that's true. So these two dudes are flying around in a blimp in San Francisco, and they see oil on the surface of the water out in the bay. And they go, that might be a sub. That might actually be a Japanese sub hiding underwater. Now, apparently that happened back then. For whatever reason, subs would either have to leak oil out or would sometimes accidentally leak oil out. I wasn't too for sure on the research. It seems like that kind of... Defeats the purpose of being underwater if oil shoots to the surface. But anyways, so this blimp goes over the oil. And there was multiple witnesses to this. Two men are on the blimp. It's a, it's a crew of two. And they radio in a headquarters, hey, we see oil on the water. We're going to go see if there's a sub down there. So the blimp <laughs> goes out there. And they're talking. They're like, man, I wonder why those girls... I wonder why those girls left so quickly last night. They're like, I don't know. They were on the blimp. It's totally awesome. We we flew around San Francisco. It only took three days to get from one end to the other. But anyway, so it lowers itself to 30 feet above the water. So that's super, super close. Now, there was a Navy ship out in the bay. And there was a fishing boat in the bay. And the, dude on the, the people on the Navy ship were looking because they're thinking there might be a sub there and we have to be ready for something. The witnesses on the fishing boat, they one of them broke out their binoculars and was watching the whole event just because it's a sight scene. This is a military blimp, and you see it hovering over a point near you, and then it goes to 30 feet above the water. And the guy's watching with the binoculars, so people are watching from the ship. And then the blimp throws out ballast, which allows it to rise again, and it flies away. People are like, oh, okay. you know, They just saw it lower, sit there for a while, and then drop the ballast and fly up. So a short time later... The blimp floats by the Golden Gate Bridge. And again, hundreds of witnesses. You got people driving down the road. You got people in the city. You got people on the other side of the bridge in Marin County watching this blimp fly by. It then raises itself to 2,000 feet, which is actually 
getting dangerously high for a blimp. And it should have kicked in a safety mechanism to start to lower it. And people Now, obviously, a normal person isn't going to be like, whoa, look at how high that is. That's actually quite dangerous. But when people were describing the event to the Navy later on, they were saying how high it was, and the Navy officers would be like, hmm, that's kind of weird. It shouldn't go that high. And at this point, it started to look bent or damaged. The blimp didn't look normal. It wasn't a big old inflated blimp. It just started to, people started to notice some deformation in the, in, in the blimp itself. But it's still just kind of flying by. Now, people at this point, you know, again, it's a sight. It's, you're used to seeing stuff like that in the area, but it's still weird because this blimp is kind of flying in areas where it normally wouldn't. People are breaking out their binoculars. There are people in the blimp, in the cabin. It's flying by. Three hours later, it comes by this beach in San Francisco. It's way off course of where it should be at this point. And it hasn't had any radio contact since it said, we think there's a submarine underwater. We're investigating this oil spill. Complete radio silence. Blimps flying by. Now, it comes down. And people are just sitting on the beach, chilling. It crashes into the beach. And at that point, a bunch of... Stuff is knocked off, one of them being a depth charge, which they used to drop on submarines. It's knocked off the blimp and rolls into the beach, and enough weight is knocked off the blimp that it actually gets airborne again and starts flying into the city. Now, at this point, everyone's freaking out. There's a, basically a live bomb on the beach. There's this blimp flying dangerously closer to the city. People are making phone calls on their old-timey phones, saying, hey, there's something really bad's going on with this blimp. It begins... Then basically crashing into buildings and then finally smashing into the ground. The entire blimp <laughs> deflates. Actually made that noise, I'm assuming. And it just sat there. Now at this point, rescue crews go out to the blimp. Now, I'm sure, I don't know what they filled blimps with back then. I don't even know what they fill blimps with now. But of course, I'm sure they were afraid of fires or, you know, really bad smells or whatever. So the firemen get out there. The police officers get out there. And they're like, clear the area, clear the area. We have to save the crew. They go and the cabin door of the blimp is open and it's completely empty. They're like, oh, everyone scratches their head at the same time. So obviously the military had investigated this. And one of the theories was, one of the theories of the like media one of the th- i was reading an article the other day and they're like this man answered the riddle of the ghost blimp with one sentence and it was on like huffpo or buzzfeed or some other website and it was like the the pro- guy posted on reddit about the mystery of the ghost blimp i think they fell out and the article was like see how easy it's to solve this but see the, the so that was kind of the media's attitude towards it that it must have just been either they both fell out or one guy fell out and that was it. But the military, to this day, have never really been able to figure out what happened. Because this is the thing. The door, the safety bar to the door that leads outside and to your plummeting death, if you're in the air, was unlatched and the door was open. Two of the three life jackets were missing, but it was required for you if you were in a blimp to wear a life jacket, just in case. Again, hard to pick up chicks when you're flying around in a blimp going 10 miles an hour and you're wearing a giant life vest. But, so you'd think, well, maybe they fell out. Maybe they're wearing their life vest, the door pops open, they fall out. But there's other interesting clues. One of them, their hat was sitting on the control panel. So you think that if the thing shifted too much, everything in the place would have shifted. So if, if it shifted and knocked them both out, why would the hat be sitting there? Two, nobody saw the people with binoculars who saw it hover over the water, over the oil. Nobody saw anyone fall out of it. It raised the ballast, it floated away. When it was flying by the Golden Gate Bridge, people said there were people in it. So if they fell out, it happened sometime between after the Golden Gate Bridge and before it crashed into the beach. But what would have caused them to fall out of it? If they had bailed out, they could have radioed in. Like if one one of the theories was that one guy jumped out and the other guy jumped out to save him but didn't radio it in. And I get it. Sometimes people make dumb decisions, but that's pretty stupid. A guy falls out of the blimp and you go, I'll save you, and you jump out of the blimp too. One of the theories is that they were captured by the Japanese, but that doesn't make sense because nobody saw that either. The official military report says, no fire, no submersion, no misconduct, and no missiles struck the L-8, which was the... Designation of the blimp. 
A careful analysis of the evidence indicates no reason for voluntary abandonment of the airship. The board therefore believes the abandonment was involuntary. Maybe they fell out. Maybe they were taken out. Maybe they were abducted by aliens. Or maybe they simply just disappeared. Them falling out, nobody witnessed that. Them being captured by the Japanese, they had a briefcase of secret codes in the blimp that was still there. So if they were abducted, it's most likely that that briefcase would go missing. Them being abducted by aliens, as fanciful as that is, and completely against Occam's razor is that one fell out and the other one jumped, or they both fell out at the same time. But you think that that is something that the military could have said. This was an accident. We think they fell out. Because to this day, they still say 100% unknown, undetermined. They don't know what happened. Alien abduction, they just disappeared. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's still, again, if it was something that it was flying through the fog, and then it came out of the fog and a bunch of people, (laughs) people were falling out of it, then you'd say, yeah, they fell out of it. But there were so many witnesses watching it for so long and nobody saw anything fall out of it. And people saw people in it even after the Japanese submarine part. It really makes you think, where did these guys go? Time portal? Shifted to another reality? (laughs) Alien abduction? Yes, they're all fantastical explanations. But when you run out of, they fell out. When even the military is not taking that as an answer... And saying, you know, it was a horrible accident. We're retraining our people on how to deal with this stuff. We're reinforcing the doors or anything like that. They're just like, we don't know what it is. Because obviously, if stuff mechanically fails, the military doesn't want that to keep happening. If they go, hey, we think these guys fell out. So we're going to reconfigure all of our blimps. So to prevent that from ever happening again. But they're like, we don't know. What happened to the crew of the ghost blimp? To be fair, it wasn't called the ghost blimp when it was flying around. I wouldn't get on that blimp. But interestingly enough... That blimp actually ended up becoming a Goodyear blimp and flew in service for another 30 years with no other major accidents. So who knows? Interesting story. I always like it when I kind of stumble across something new I've never heard of and it just instantly intrigues me. So that's it. That is the story of L8 and the ghost blimp. So let's break this down actually like a conspiracy theory because I've had to read a ton of articles like this lately. The blimp was called L8, which technically is late as in late to live longer. Or L8, as in the L stands for life, and the 8 stands for 8, like it's the life eater, possibly. No, none of that works, does it? I gotta stop reading all that. We've got an episode coming up where it's all nonsense like that, where each number means something. I've been reading it too much. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.